Hey everyone, and welcome to another Reddit video. This is Pwn Vault Breaker. It's a retired hack the box challenge, and it's a it was rated a very easy challenge, and I agree with it. Um, we're just going to be XORing some bytes together in a clever way to leak the flag. Um, in this video, we're going to do the setup. We're just going to play with the binary for a quick second, then we'll do some reversing a Ghidra to understand how it's working. Afterwards, uh, I have I'll do a overview of how the solve is going to look. And then there's actually two different solve scripts. Uh, one is the one I actually did. And then while I was making this video and editing, I realized there's a different one I can do. Um, and then uh, we'll, grab the, we'll get the flag from the remote system and that'll be it. Uh, so like I said, the challenge is called Vault Breaker. Um, I'm not gonna read the full description. I just like the first intro. It says Money Maker Big Boy Bonnie. So we're gonna be helping Big Boy Bonnie break into a vault. Um, so for this challenge, we're given two different things. Uh, we're given a example flag.txt and this vault breaker um, binary. So uh, let me make this nice and big. Cool. Um, if we look at the binary, we can do a file star, see what it is. So it is a vault breaker. It is a ELF 64-bit. Uh, and thankfully, it is not stripped. So that'll make reversing in Ghidra a little bit easier. Uh, let's jump into an Ubuntu box and give it a whirl. Vault breaker. It says random secure encryption key has been or has been generated. So there's some sort of encryption key, and we have two options. We can either generate a new key, and we have to give it the length of a new password. So let's say a 10. Cool. And then we can click secure the vault, and we can see we get some random stuff here. So that's interesting. Um, let's take a look in Ghidra. So now that Ghidra is open, let's jump to the main function. So the hard part of this challenge wasn't actually writing the exploit. It was just trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and so to give a kind of a high level view of what this binary is doing, um, there's this global uh, array that holds 32 bytes of randomness. And when we ask, when we open the vault, it's actually printing out the flag, but it's XORing the flag with that 32 bytes of randomness. Um, the randomness comes from dev urand. So or you random, so it's pretty much impossible to like, you know, you, we can, we're not going to be doing any cryptographic attacks because XOR is very secure. So um, there must be some sort of other bug. And uh, we'll, we'll find that bug in just a second. So there, the main function does three important things. First off, it's going to call keygen. Then it's going to go into this infinite loop where we can either generate a new key or we can ask for the flag. So uh, the keygen is the first thing it does. And so it's just going to initialize that global array of 32 bytes. Um, it does that by opening up dev random. We can see here uh, it gets the file number. Then it reads from the random file for OX 20 bytes, so um, 32 bytes, uh, into this random key uh, variable, which is a global. Uh, we can change the type of this. It doesn't matter too much. But choose data type. And this is actually a care 32. And so it's 32 bytes. Cool. So that is the gen key or key gen function, which gets called right at the very start of main. So before we enter that infinite loop, um, the random key is set to 32 bytes of real randomness. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go into secure password next. So this is the function that prints out. Um, so this was the last step we did. Like It was like the vault is open and here's the master password. Uh, that's this function. So it's going to do a bunch of printing since it has all those like special characters and stuff. There's a bunch of weird print logic, but we can skip over most of that. Um, so here it's opening flag.txt. So this is what we're interested in. So let's rename this because no one remembers what local 48 is. This was the flag file pointer. I just type L on the keyboard to rename a variable. Um, cool, so we have the flag file pointer. Um, we're going to grab the flag file number, so the file descriptor. We'll just rename that FD. Then we're going to read from the flag uh, file descriptor into this buffer. So we'll call this the flag buff. Cool, then we close the file. We're going to print some more stuff out. Then it says the master password for vault. We're also printing that out. And that's going to enter this while true loop. Cool. Um, so we can see it's doing a put care down here with a random key XOR this. Oh, local 50, this is actually the flag. Uh, flag buff. We'll just call it flag buff too. Um, I think it gets set up here. Yeah. These two things are addressing uh, the same underlying memory. Um, so we have our flag buffer. Um, it's being accessed by this. I'm going to rename this i. Um, so while true, uh, i is equal to uvar1. So we'll just call it i2. Um, uvar is the length. So we'll call this uh, flag buff lang. So while if it's less than break, so this is our exit condition. So this could have been a for loop, but instead it's just doing a while loop. Um, so i is basically our index. It's going to check iterate character by character until it hits the very end. It's going to print characters. And the character it's going to print is the flag at some index XORed with the random key at some index. Cool. Um, so as it stands, if there wasn't this new key gen function, um, this would be pretty impossible to break uh, so far. Um, 
the yeah XOR encryption is like perfectly secure, like it's not biased in any way. So uh, you have you you gain no knowledge when you get an XOR encrypted ciphertext because you can get retrieve any sort of plain text in the world. Um, and for that reason, it's called I think it's called a perfectly balanced um, or perfectly secure. So as it stands, uh, this program is not vulnerable to anything that I know of, and so hopefully we'll find a bug in this code, and obviously we will. Um, so this is the very last function. So we were able to generate a new key. And if you remember when we were in the binary, it said like generate a new key of a certain length. Uh, the bug must be somewhere in here. Um, it's cool. So we're going to open up devu random again. Let's call this the, the rand uh, file pointer. Um, it says while the, this is our, we can see, oops, I'm skipping ahead, but while this number is greater than ox1f, uh, it's going to keep asking us. So this is the read num. So this is our input num. So while our input num is greater than some value, it's going to ask for another value. So I'm guessing it's just saying the value needs to be between 0 and ox1f, which makes sense. Then it's going to memset this local buff to zeros uh, for 32 bytes. So this is going to be all zeros. Uh, we're going to get the file number. So this is the file descriptor. Then it, we're going to read from the random buffer into this local buffer uh, an input num of times. So we gave it a number, like we could say, Maybe the number was five is the number we supplied. So then it would read five bytes of randomness into local buffer. So this code is a little bit strange. Um, basically, we're going to be rereading random for any byte that is equal to null. And I guess this is kind of a hint. Um, if any of the XOR key was null, uh, we would instantly, if you any XOR anything with null, you just get back the, the original thing. And so I guess this what this logic is trying to do is say like, hey, if any of the secret keys were actually null, um, you know, we're going to uh, change it to something else. Um, what's weird though is we don't actually know what the key is, so we don't really have any way of knowing if it was null or not. Um, but this is just double checking to make sure it's null. Maybe this is a hint for what the bug is supposed to be, um, because the bug actually happens on this line. Um, if you want, you can pause the video, see what's so wrong about this. Um, if you want a hint and you're still guessing, um, the hint would be what's the difference between string copy and mem copy? Um, and the answer is a string copy also copies the null terminating byte. So we did a mem set up here to this local buff. And so everything in local buff is going to be zero. Then we filled it up, let's say input num was five, with five bytes of randomness. So it's going to be five bytes of randomness followed by 15 bytes of null. Then, and then we're going to clear out any extra null bytes um, up until our input number. So this isn't going to go past five. Then when we do that string copy, we're going to copy uh, from that local buff into the random key. So the random key currently has 20 bytes of randomness. When we copy that local buff, it's also going to include that single null byte at the end. So it would be byte six, I guess, uh, if we we're doing an input number five. And so because of that, random key is going to have a null byte, and we get to control where that null byte is. Um, so pretty exciting. And so using that, uh, we're just going to position the null byte at different indexes and we'll grab the flag character by character. And so that's the exploit. Um, to kind of, I mean, I think hopefully it's clear by now, but um, if not, we'll just go over it real quick. So there's two variables. We have the flag and we have our key. And this is our random key. And so what's happening is these both exist somewhere in memory. And when it's printed out, um, it's doing a XOR on them. So it's impossible to figure out what the original flag was. So we're going to get something like, you know, 37, 13, 29, 125, like complete gibberish. There's no way to decode it because the key is going to also be like, you know, random values like 59, 60, let's say 16, 63, 127. And this is hack the box angle bracket, you know, and then the rest of the flag, dot, 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 dot. Cool. So if there was that final function, there would be no bug. But what we're going to be exploiting is the fact that when we do a string copy, this is all filled with randomness. And when we say we want to copy five new random bytes, it's going to do, OK, insert new random byte, insert new random byte, insert new random byte, new byte, new byte. And because it's doing a string copy instead of a mem copy, what's going to happen is this is going to be a 0. And so when the XOR happens uh, between this zero and this character, we're going to get back the original character. And so what we're going to do is we're going to supply, we're going to run this program 20 times. And the very first time, we're going to say, hey, I want to generate a new key of length uh, zero. 
And so what's going to happen is it's going to generate one of length zero, so it's not going to add any new bytes, but it's still going to do that string copy. And so that string copy is going to put a zero here. The rest are still random, so we don't get to see the rest of them. So I don't know, 37. Um, but we're going to get out an H and then a whole bunch of gibberish. And then on the next run, we're going to say, hey, I want one random byte. Uh, and it's going to put something in here, so 72. And then since it's doing that string copy, we're going to place a zero uh, right here. Oops, right here. And so when we do that XOR and we get out the, the response, there's going to be gibberish here and gibberish over here, but we'll get back the T. And so then we're just going to write a script that iterates character by character. Uh, this is the solution I did, uh, but um, I also realized while uh, right before I recorded this video and I, I typed it up real quick, uh, there's another solution that might be even easier and we only have to run the process once. And that's um, the reason that the rest of them are random. Well, when we do generate a new key, it doesn't touch any of the bytes to the far right. So what we could do instead is just work on the other side and actually set the entire buffer to null. So what we could do is we could say, hey, I want to generate a key of 32 bytes, or sorry, 31 bytes. And so it'll generate, you know, random, 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 random for 31 bytes. And then the last one will set a zero. And then we want to say, hey, I want to generate a key of 30 bytes. So it'll do random, 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 random. And then the very last one will be set to zero. And then we'll do 30, 29, 28, blah, blah, blah. And we'll go all the way down. And so that entire key buffer will be all zeros. And so then we can ask uh, to open the vault. And so we'll get the full flag, you know, hack the box, bracket, blah, 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 blah. Um, so cool. So let's look at the solves. Um, like I said, there are two different solve scripts. This is the one I did first. Um, uh, I import pwn tools. I ignore warnings. Um, I load the binary. Uh, we don't need libc. Um, I just have it as my default script. Um, we set the binary context. Technically, it's not needed for this one. I do some terminal stuff because I use tmux. Um, I know the flag starts with hack the box. Uh, so I just continued it. So I say while the last character of the flag is not equal to angle bracket because we're going to be restarting the process for every single character. Um, I start the process and I send it a one. So if we go back to the binary, uh, make Ubuntu. It was called vault something, vault breaker. Uh, the first thing we need to do is generate a key. So I type in one. So that's what I'm doing. So it's after you see that, that first bracket, send a one. And then after you see what looks like a sad face, uh, which is this send the length of the flag. So if we're on character, the length of the flag is three right now, um, obviously it would send three. And so that means because it's then zero indexed, we'd get back the third or fourth byte, depending on how you're counting. Um, so we'll say, yeah, we're gonna send the length of three just to continue. Um, then at this next step, we're going to wait for the angle bracket, which we have, and then send a two. And we're gonna wait. And then um, we're going to grab the third character. So zero, one, two, three. And so the next character is a bracket. And if we look at our flag, that is the case. The next character is a bracket. Um, and cool, and we can see these are all gibberish. Uh, we can't trust any of these because they all have random values, um, but that's okay. We'll just go character by character and that's what this uh, script did. So if we actually run it, python3 solve.py. Oh, and to just to finish it up, um, I receive until it says vault something. Then I receive the number of bytes equal to the current length of the flag because we know those are all garbage. And then I just receive one character because we only want to take one character. And then I close the process and I print out what the current flag is. Um, so we can run it real quick. Uh, boop, boop, boop. And it goes all the way through. And we finish with hack the box fake flag for testing. I don't get the last one for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but it doesn't matter. We, we, this is all it really is. Um, and so then we can connect to remote. Um, I think it should still be live. See if it's still working. And it is not. Uh, let's respawn it incorrect parameters. Uh, I'll let that spawn in the background while we look at the other self script. Um, this is the cleaner self script anyways, so uh, we're doing the same sort of thing. We're setting everything up. We're importing pwn, uh, ignoring warnings, blah, blah, blah. Everything's the same, except for this time, we're doing the solution where we set, hey, set a key of length 31. And so that way the 32nd byte is null. Then we're going to set a key of the length 30, so that way the 31st byte is null, and then 29, so the 30th byte is null, and we do that by just walking backwards. So I'm doing range from 31 to minus 1, subtract 1 every time. I print out the index, and then um, I do the same sort of thing, uh, set the key, and this is what the key should be equal to, and then at the very end I say, hey, give me the vault. So if we do python3 solve2, uh, am I uh, local? Yep. It'll go brrr, and then we, here we go, fake flag for testing. So we can copy the real IP address. And let's see, we'll just run it on the second one because it's a little bit cleaner. We'll split these out. Oops. Get rid of that. 
close. And it should go, it's a little bit slower on remote because it has to make all those network requests, but should get the flag in just a second. And there we go, we get the flag. So fun little challenge. Um, this challenge might seem a little bit contrived, but these actual uh, off by one no byte injections actually become super important later. Uh, there's a number of fun heap based exploits where you can totally compromise a system just by a single uh, no byte, um, which is very fun. So this sets the ground for some more advanced exploitation. So it's a fun challenge. Uh, anyways, I'll see you in the next Reddit video. Cheers.